Hello guys, good evening. Good evening guys, how are you doing? You're doing good and you, Prof? Good, good. Okay, I think we can we can start. Okay, guys, so we're going to continue today with a financial accounting part of the part of the equation. <clears throat> this is simple. So if I remember well, so let me show you my screen. Yeah. So basically, guys, we, we did up to number seven, right? Can you verify that? I have it here. Yeah, we did it up to up to seven. Make sense to you, guys? Yes. So we need transaction number, up to transaction number seven. Okay, so now let's take five minutes to do uh, eight to 10. Okay, this is gonna be very simple. Eight to 10. Remember guys that um, this corporation does not sell computers, okay? So this is, uh, they're doing something here. They're simply providing a computer service. So they are not selling computers. Okay, so let's do this two. Eh, sorry, three, eight, nine, and ten. Five minutes, and then we do it, and then we move from here.
Okay, two more minutes. Okay, guys, so let's do this. So let me read my printed copy. So we have here, we provide a computer service, a cash $4,000, credit 30 days, $3,000. So the service cost $7,000. But then we have a sales tax. We just pay $300 that corresponds to the cash side of the equation. And 225 that corresponds to the $3,000 are going to be paid together with $3,000. Do you understand that? Okay, so that's the tricky part. So this implies that basically what the corporation is doing is giving a, a credit also, not only on the, on the $3,000, but also in the 225, right? And remember the problem with this issue is that this is not corporation's money. So technically guys, this is very rare. Normally what happens is that when you sell a credit to a credit, the taxes are paid all in advance, okay? This is just to show you what's going on. So let's go and let's fill this one here. So I have, um, I received cash 4,300, right? That's right. Yes, I received 4,300. Agree with me guys? This is what I received. Yeah. Yes. Now I have, a, the people is going to owe me 3,225, so this is accounts receivable. From here, it's, here is the, the trick part, the tricky part. How much I should consider as a taxes payable, guys? Because remember, do you have taxes 300 and 225 here. How much I should consider here? That's the tricky part. So for the, for the state, it's a state. I don't care if you, if you if, you're not prohibited to, to give a credit to taxes but I don't care, got it? So basically here we need to do the five to five directly. So these are all the taxes, 225 from here and 300 from here, make sense? Yes. And then what is my, my, my revenue? Well, my revenue is going to be $7,000, correct? So let's take a look to the, to the control. Yes. Uh, why? Oh, see, here we have zero. Make sense to everyone? Yes. Uh, I, I did uh, a little different because I put on um, 7525 as the revenue because I thought it's like like after uh, once the uh, revenue already accounts for like the cost. No, 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 no. The, the taxes are not revenue. Remember, the taxes, the 300 and the 225 from here are not your money. You are simply collecting that and you're going to pay this very soon. In the example, you, we are going to show who to pay this. Normally in real life, guys, you collect these sales taxes until the end of the month. And then at the end of the month, you need to pay all the sales taxes to the government. That's a, the definition. By, that's the way you pay for sale taxes. Make sense? So you cannot include any of the taxes in your revenue. This goes directly to the government. Make sense? Daniel? Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so now let's do number nine. Number nine tells me, okay, I just pay salaries, cash. Normally pay you salaries, you pay cash, so you reduce this by 3,500. And this is directly an expense, correct? 
minus 3,500. Of course, I have my zero here, so we are all okay. Easy one, correct? So now let's do number 10. Oh, here I pay myself taxes. So how much money I owe to the government, if you sum these ones here, I owe to the government 1,087.33. Make sense? So I need now to pay. So I'm at the end of the month, I need to pay. So what I need to do is I minus, what is my, 1,087.326. And this one here, guys, is going to disappear this part here. That's why we have two, two negatives here. You see? Negative here, negative here, but if you go to your check, zero. Because we have one in the asset side, one transaction in the asset side, one transaction in the liability side. Make sense to everyone? Yes. So this is the trick, guys. Can you see this 525, only 300 were paid in cash. So I'm putting my cash, I'm putting five, uh, 225 from my cash to pay this to the government. So that's why I, I was telling to you guys, even though you, you, you sell on credit, the taxes, the sales taxes are all paid in advance, okay? There is no rule for that, remember. So if you want to do that, you, you can do that, However, you need, to be, you need to pay attention that when you need to pay to the government, you are going to use your own money. Do you understand, guys? Of course, you're going to recover this 225 later in time, but if you are short in cash, be careful with that. You cannot do that if you are short in cash. If you have a lot of liquidity, you don't have an issue. Or, or, or if this guy is a very good client, you don't have an issue with that. Make sense to everyone? Yes. Perfect. Okay, so now let's do... 11 to 14, um, yeah, let's do 11 to 14, to 13. Let's say five minutes to do this, 11 to 13. Please think, okay, that the only way we're gonna learn this one is just thinking about how we do this. Five minutes, guys, 11 to 13.
Ready? Nice. Yep. So let's do number 11. <clears throat> so 11 says the following. I will pay the payment and refinancing of credit operation on 117.17, okay? I, the, the zero six is wrong. So basically, remember guys, we bought merchandise, we pay cash $5,000 and we have a credit for 30 days with no interest, $12,000, okay? So this, this operation, this transaction is what we're talking about now. So from this $12,000, I will pay $4,000 cash and I will refinance the 8,000 remaining. But now these guys are going to charge me an interest, right? So how do we compute that? So I will pay, first of all, the, the cash side of the equation. I will pay $4,000 cash. This is going to reduce my debt, my accounts payable by 4,000. Oh, sorry, not 400. Make sense? So this is the first part of this one here. Then what I'm doing is I'm refinancing, refinancing $8,000. What is this one here? 11, 11. Yes. And I will pay in interest, you know, in 30 more days, 32.59. So how do I consider this? The 8,000, I don't need to do anything. Uh, it's an expense. Right? Yes, this is an expense. So, but this one here is going to be what? Interest payable. It's going to be interest payable. Yep. So where I will go here, interest payable. So I will pay, I will have a, a liability for 32.59 that I will pay in 30 days. And this is an expense. So this goes directly this goes directly as an expense here, minus 32.59. Good. Where are the 8,000? We don't need to do anything with 8,000, guys, because the 8,000 is simply this number. 12,000 minus 4,000, I have my 8,000 loan there. So I don't need to register that because it's already registered. The only thing that I need to register is the $32 that, are going to be, that I will pay in the future as, a, as an interest. It's clear? Sorry, uh, can we just go over again? Why don't we register 8,000 anywhere? Yes, so remember that what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I had a debt, uh, an accounts payable for $12,000, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm paying $4,000 of that. So what is uh, the remaining money that I owe to, the, to my seller? $8,000, got it? Mm -hmm. Okay, and what I need to register is also, the only thing that I need to register is the interest that I will pay. So they charge me 32.59, that is gonna be paid in 30 days or something like that. And as soon as you register this as an interest payable, so you're not paying right now. So that's why it's not cash, you're not paying, you're gonna pay this in the future. However, you need to register this as an expense immediately. Even though you're gonna pay in 30 days or whatever, you need to register this transaction as an expense already. Okay? Okay. Um, and sorry, just so yeah, that okay. I'm, I'm still confused. So in the data um, sheets of the Excel file, right? Yep. Uh, for the 11th operations, the total amount is put at 8,032.59. Oh, this is, this, is, that yeah, yeah. this one here is the, the amount of money ref refinance. This is correct. Because you have $8,000 that are the remaining of uh, 12,000 minus four is eight. But you need to also include to this $8,032. So indeed your debt now is not 8,000. Your debt is 8,032. Do you agree? So yes, that is a total amount of debt that I'm that left debt. after. Yes. Yeah, but you know, the way I was, it just confused me, I guess, um, when I yeah. looked at it, like what it was. Because yeah, but, like, but, I guess in this column, uh, all these numbers mean different things, right? Based on what operation is happening. Yes, that's, but, but you know, no, but this is very logic. And uh, that's what we need to understand is the logic is very simple. So I pay $4,000, so cash de decreases by $4,000 and my debt decreases by $4,000. Do you agree? This part yes. of the, yes. So how much I owe to, the, to my creditor? $8,000, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, I don't know anything. I just simply know that I owe $8,000. However, my debt now is not $8,000. It will add up, it, it will be more by $32. So that's what I need to account. So now I have, of course, this is not going to be called accounts payable. It's going to be, it's related to accounts payable, but it's called interest payable. Yeah. 
But then at the end of the day, if you sum all this part here, how much you owe to the, to the creditor? 8,032. That this is this part here. This one. Okay. Okay? Yes. Uh, okay. So 12. What is 12? So 12, use of first month of publicity. So remember, guys, that we pay somewhere around here. Publicity in advance. I think this is the one. Prepaid expenses. Do you remember? Oh. So we pay the, the advertiser three thousand dollars, but we, this advertiser didn't do anything for us. Okay, so that's why this is a, a an asset class transaction. However, when you start using it, they say you know you have used now the first first month of publicity. So do you reduce cash or not? No, probably. No, because I already paid this in the past. Yeah. But, but what I need to do is I need to reduce my prepaid expenses by thousand. Mm -hmm. And what is this now? So I, I appear in a newspaper and this costs me thousand dollars. So this is what? An expense. Exactly. This is also an expense. Okay. So prepaid expenses, guys, they get expenses once you use the, the service. So in this case, oh, so we didn't include them earlier. Yeah. Yes, exactly, exactly, exactly. You mm -hmm. pay at the beginning, but there was no advertising, and perhaps after one month, they include you in a newspaper and they charge you. So in that case, you simply reduce this here and you consider this as an expense. Thirteen. Someone pays us. 125, uh, 125.17, 125.17. Yeah, we sell on credit, remember, $2,000. So basically someone is paying us. So I will receive cash, $2,000, and this is going to, to decrease my accounts receivable by $2,000, do you agree? So basically what I'm yes. doing, guys, is I'm canceling this, with this disappear, correct? Make sense to you guys? Yes. Perfect. So now let's do five more minutes, 14 to 16. So you do 14 to 16. Try, okay, think about that. It doesn't matter if you, you get confused or you, you do it wrong later, but just do it.
Okay, so now we have an old payment <clears throat> for this transaction. So I will receive cash. I will receive cash, the, the 3,225, correct guys? And then this is going to reduce one. This one here, that's all. My accounts receivable. Yeah, exactly. So this one disappears, this part here. And this one here is a cash that cancels with this one here. Oh, so we put all 3,225 in accounts receivable, so we don't take any taxes. No, not anymore, separate. because remember, I already paid here. You see, so that's the issue. So when you need to pay the government, the government doesn't care if you have, if you have give a credit the, the, the tax. They don't care. You need to pay me, you pay me now. So that's what I'm saying. 2225, 20, it was credit, do you agree? So I don't, I don't have this 225. From, from my client. But the government is telling me, you need to pay me and we need to pay him. So I'm using 225 from my own, own funds to pay this, this tax. But of course, later in time, I will receive this. But that's why I'm telling to you guys is that if you have liquidity constraints, you never do this, this thing. You charge the taxes upfront. So you can give credit to your price, but not to the taxes. Make sense? So now I have a 16 is a very simple one. We sell merchandise for $5,000 and the cost of merchandise is, five, is 3,500. So I, I have $5,000 cash. This produces a revenue. So let me, give me one second. So I have 5,000 here and I have an income of $5,000, do you agree? But to produce this one here, I need to reduce my inventory by 3,500. So this is the cost of goods. And this cost of goods, goods is an expense in the same amount. So you can do this transaction guys in a single line if you want, but I, I do this in two lines just to, to show you how this works. Questions about 15 guys. Um, sorry, I, I just need to come make sure to copy this. Um, yeah. So we reduced inventories in, by 3,500. Uh, and what uh, balancing um, action did we take on the other side? Oh, the 5,000, they are uh, an in, uh, revenue. No, I meant for the 3,500, yeah. but I see it's expenses. Yes, okay. you reduce your, your inventory and this is a cost of goods, remember, it's an, it's an expense. And remember, always expenses are negative, always. And then we have our control column zero. So we're perfect. Now 16, well, we pay salaries again as before, pay salaries, cash, and this is an expense, a, di a direct expense. Uh, the, the, next the next transactions are really, really interesting. Okay, try to do guys from, where, where are we? Let's try to do 17 to 19, five minutes. Think how this works, okay? It's very logic, there is nothing magic here. Okay, five minutes to do 17 to 19, guys.
I didn't know that I can write in here. It's excellent. Okay, guys, are you done? 17 to 19? Guys, are you, are you there? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so let's try to understand, let's try to understand 17, that is really important. This is a, a bond, okay? So a bond, by definition, guys, is a, a long-term, liability, do you agree? And basically what we are going to do with these $30,000 is going to buy equipment, right? Now, you have an additional piece of information, guys, is that it says it's 3% coupon per year, so this implies that I will pay $900 per year, got it? In total, I will pay $3,000 because it's four, four periods, I think, yes, four years, but only 900 are going to be paid on this year. And the 2,700 are going to be are going to be paid after one year, so long term. Got it? In accounting terms, this is long term. So here we go with the trick. So let's first set up the thirty thousand dollars. Okay. So I receive I will receive cash thirty thousand dollars, and I will have uh, where is this bonds payable for thirty thousand dollars. Correct. This is the the easy part. However, Sorry. Uh, yes. Um, what if uh, I skipped the cash part and immediately just put in the equipment. Is that yeah, you wrong? can. You can. No, 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 no. You can. Yeah, I will do this in two stages just to show you. But yes, you can. Okay. Directly you can. Definitely. Yes. Okay. So do you understand the cash part? However, guys, we have a short uh, an interest. Got it? And then that my short term interest is nine hundred dollars, correct? And these nine hundred dollars are immediately reported guys as an expense. Make sense? Now, the only missing part of this equation, guys, is where do I put my $2,700? The, the row below. Hey, no, no, no. <clears throat> what I mean is in, in which column? <laughs> <laughs> uh, long term. Interest. Okay. I put these guys only for, uh, for confusing you. So indeed, any long term interest. The problem is that if I put here the 2700 okay, so let's assume that. So how do I make this to disappear? Well, the only way you can make this disappear is also adding the 2,700 here, do you agree? Do you agree, guys? Yeah. Yes, however, you cannot do that because this is not a, a payment that you're gonna do this year. You're gonna do this payment next year or in the next three years. So what is the, technical, the technicality here, guys, is that when you have a bond, the short term goes in a short term interest, and the long term, so the 2,700, don't go in the balance. They go into the notes to the financial statements. Okay, so the 2,000, I will write this here, just so we get the, the, the 2,700. This is the, the long term interest. They all go to the notes to financial statements. Okay, so they are not, they don't appear here, but what is gonna happen guys is that perhaps here in the, um, in the balance, you're gonna have a, you're gonna see an star or something like that, note one, for example. So when you are reading these financial statements, you need to go to note one and say, oh, got it, 2,700 is a long-term interest rate that is not considered here. Make sense? Legally, guys, we cannot consider the 2,700 directly here as a loss, as, a, as an expense, because remember, expenses reduce the taxes, you agree? So the governments don't like that. The governments are going to force you to move this 2,700 outside the book, outside the, uh, the balance sheet, and put them in a note. Make sense to everyone? Guys, make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so let me let me delete this part here. Yeah, it deletes one more one. Okay, so now what I will do is, uh, well, I use this money. 
I use the full money to buy equipment. So what is my equipment? To increase my equipment in $30,000. Agree? So indeed, what you can do, guys, directly is instead of having this up and down, you simply put $30,000 here, $30,000 here, $900 here. This is correct, Daniel, okay? I just do it in, in two steps because just to show you how this works. What is the logic of this? Okay, 17 is done. So now 18, guys, is that we sell all equipment. And, and this happens. Sometimes you have uh, all equipment that you don't want to use anymore. So instead of having it in your, in your place, you simply sell it. Okay, it doesn't matter if you lose money or not. Normally you lose money when you drive, you, when you sell this type of, 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 of equipment. So what we're doing is we're selling all equipment by $5,000. So this implies that I received $5,000 here, okay? And this is a, an extraordinary revenue, do you agree? Guys, do you agree? So just to note, this is an extraordinary revenue. So what is- Sorry, what, what, what does it mean by uh, extraordinary? Yes, revenue? what it means is that this is not, not your business. So your business is not to sell your equipment, you see? You're selling because you know what, perhaps you don't need it anymore and someone needs this one here and at least you make some money just selling that. Make sense to you? So extraordinary comes from the sense that this is not your business. Okay, your, your business is not selling equipment. Make sense? But you have done that because you, you have the opportunity to do that and on, on selling something that you really don't, don't need. However, guys, this has a cost. Do you agree? If, if it's a, a revenue, we need to have a cost. And what is my cost? Well, my cost is that I'm selling some equipment that is worth $7,000. I'm selling this by for five thousand dollars. So indeed, what I'm doing, these seven thousand dollars are going to decrease here. So what I'm doing at the end of the day, guys, I'm losing in this transaction two thousand dollars. Correct? But this is an extraordinary transaction. So and, and normally this happens. I remember when I was working in the airline, in the airline industry, we used to sell a lot of components of the planes. And sometimes, you know, it's more expensive to have them in, in the warehouse, to keep them warehousing, have personnel to, to keep track of that. So much better is to just sell it. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a sell. You, you just sell it as, uh, and try to get as much money as you, as you want, but you always, you in general lose money here. But this is an extraordinary income, guys, because I'm basically not selling, uh, selling equipment. My equipment is not my business. Make sense? Yeah. Perfect. So now the 20. Uh, Dr. Ringifo, would it be yes. incorrect to record the, just 2,000 as an expense because the expense is the loss on, in the sale? Yeah, 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 you can. So basically the net position here, yes, you can do the net. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So that's what I'm saying to you. Normally I do two, two steps because it's easy to understand how, how this is going to work. But if you do 2,000 here, what you need to do is you need to have the 5,000 here and um, minus seven. Yeah, that's okay. This goes up only. That's correct. In a single line, you can do that. Okay, so now let's go to 19. So 19 guys is you pay the, the debt, do you remember the 8,032? So the 8,000 from here and the 32 from here. So you are going to pay, this implies you're gonna have a, a negative. And from here, you're going to cancel out this debt. So you disappear here, the debt. And also you disappear here, the interest rate that they charge you. As you can see, if you see, take a look to this one here zero, and this part here disappears already. So we don't need to consider the interest as expenses because they were considered expenses already here. And this $8,000 simply cancel out my, my accounts payable, that's all. Okay, guys, the best practice you can do is to redo this by yourselves later, okay? Just focus on questions, ask me the questions now. <clears throat> okay, so let's do five minutes, 20 to 22. Five minutes, 20 to 22. 
20 to 22 guys, five minutes. Okay, ready? Guys, where are you? Are you ready? You need to tell me because otherwise I, I have no idea. Yeah, we're yeah. good. Okay, so let's take a look. So 20, uh, short-term plan, by, so we have a loan from a bank, $10,000, 8% annual. So I don't know how many days we're gonna get, but we have a, we're, we're going to, to we're going to receive ten thousand dollars, and we're going to pay an interest of three hundred ninety-two. Okay, so this implies I will have ten thousand dollars here. Then I can have accounts payable here, ten thousand dollars. Do you agree? Because I need to pay this, and this is going to create an interest payable of three hundred ninety-two point three. And this one here is immediately an expense, a financial expense. Oh, yeah, here we go.
questions about this transaction. So I receive cash from a bank. I need to record this as a liability, accounts payable. And the bank is going to charge me 392 short term. So everything goes here. And I decrease my interest payable, sorry, my, my expenses, or I increase my expenses are all negative by 392. Questions? Okay. Okay, good. So 21, use of the second month of publicity. Okay, so this is another use. So no, no, no cash. I have a prepaid expenses again, minus 1000. That's already paid. I have 3000 line of credit, call it like that. And now this goes into, uh, into a, an expense. This is 21, easy. 22. We buy commercial papers. So this is going to be a short-term investment, guys. We buy commercial papers for XYZ for three months, discounted at 12.5 annual. Got it? So this implies that how much money I will pay for getting this, uh, this commercial paper? 4,854. Yes, that's what I'm, I'm paying. So basically, I'm paying minus four. Uh, this is this one. No. Um, this is... 20 seconds. So I'm paying minus 4,854.9. So this is what I'm paying. <clears throat> and this is a short term investment, correct? Yeah. What is the value of this short term investment? Uh, 5,000. 5,000. Exactly that. And so the difference between this number here and this number here is what? The revenue. Exactly. So my revenue is going to be a positive 145.1. Make sense to you? Um, so before we go to the next one, so we only put 145.1 uh, in the revenues, right? It's, yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. Because indeed what you have is a, this is a discount. So you, the document is going to pay you $5,000 in, I don't know, 30 days, or I think it's 30 days, something like that, three months. But you only pay this money. So the difference between these two guys is what you're going to be making in the future. But this is a revenue, 145. Uh, sorry. Oh yeah, it's E to the minus 13. So it's, yeah, this is zero technically. You agree? Yeah, I also got this random number. Yeah, it's, it's rounding. Yeah, it was rounding only. Uh, okay. So guys, can you do 23 to 25? We're almost there. <coughs> 23 to 25, guys. Give me one second.
¿Ok? Don. Yeah. Excellent. So let's do 23. So 23, basically, we close the, the short-term investment, right? So I, I sell my, my commercial paper. I receive my $5,000, and I disappear <laughs> my short-term investment. That's all. Got it? So this one here has a lot of transactions. So what we are going to do is we reacquire capital stock. So the corporation is buying back. So this is, these are the famous buybacks, guys. So the buyback implies the following. So the corporation is going to pay 2,500. Correct? And these 2,500, And, and this 2,500 is going to reduce my, what is my bonds? Uh, oh, common stock. It's going to reduce this one by 2,500. This stock is wrong. This is stock. Do you agree, guys? Yeah. However, that the stock doesn't disappear. So it, it doesn't evaporate. <laughs> what happens is you create a new account that is called, that is called treasuries, treasury stock. This increases by 2,500. And this is, is, is canceled out with what? An expense. This is also no extraordinary expense because we don't want to be buying and selling our own stock. Um. Look, I, I understand this um, transaction that we did right now, but can we just discuss a little bit more exactly yes. what happens when we do buyback? So yes. we, um, yeah. So when, when we buy back, guys, what we're doing is a corporation, remember, so let's go back to here. So remember that we have $200,000 in, uh, imagine 200,000 shares of the corporation, mm -hmm. par value. Got it? And the corporation sometimes, and, and this happens very frequently here in USA, guys, that the corporation has a lot of liquidity. And instead of investing in another corporation, they say, you know what, why don't we buy back our own stock? So they go to the market or they go to the client, to the owners and they tell them, guys, you know what, we buy you, we buy from you $2,500, 2,500 shares, for example. Got it? And so that's what the corporation does. It pays to the current owners 2,500. It reduces the ownership by 2,500. Okay. But these shares, the paper, so imagine the paper shares don't disappear in the air. So they need, they need to be registered somewhere. So what you do is you increase a treasury stock. It's basically you have your, your stock that you have bought, bought, uh, bought back. You, you keep it in your, in, your, in your corporation. And that's why the treasury stocks goes to 2,500. And this is an expense. So you have expend $2,500 to do this transaction. Technically, guys, the number of, of shares in the market is exactly the same. This minus this <laughs> plus this. You see? Take a look to the number of shares. It's exactly the number of shares. So nothing changes technically. Make sense? Yeah, and treasury stock just is talking about all kinds of Shares, right? So, yes. Yeah, you you know, and normally you have treasury stocks for common, treasury stocks for preferred. You have both. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So this this is simply where you account for the treasuries that you have a uh, collect from the market. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Uh, Twenty five. So I pay my loan, the ten thousand three hundred something. So I will pay my loan here. So I pay my ten thousand dollars here. With this, I decide, oh, sorry, it's not 10,000. I need to pay 10,392.3 plus interest. So with this, I disappear my debt, my $10,000 debt. And I also disappear the, my, what do you call it? My interest. So I'm paying in full. And if we see the column, perfect.
Okay, so guys, now from 26 to 30, let's do five minutes. It's, it's, they're very simple. That's a good question. Yes, go ahead. Um, I feel like this is a dumb question, but this is, this is one of the financial statements. Is this the, what part of the financial statement is this? Is this the? All. Cash flow, balance, and income. I will show you in, in this class and next class. Yes, it's everything in a single income. So if you see this one here, this is my cash flow. Uh, okay. If you see this part here, this is my PL. And if you see everything, is my my balance. So that's why this method is extremely powerful, guys. You you know, it is you need to get used to this stuff. You what I suggest is okay, let's finish this stuff. I will create another exercise for you. So I will send this to you perhaps tomorrow. But the best exercise is just you have the answer. So delete this part here and redo it. And think what I did oh, is from here to here and why is that? Just think about that. This guys is one of the most useful things that iPad people told me they have received in the class. So it is extremely powerful. So when you do help, when you help other, you know, locals in somewhere in the world or in developing institutions, even the, you know, the, the embassies, this is something you want to be doing all the time. Corporations, of course, we do all the time this stuff. It is very simple, got it? But you, you're going to see how simple it is, or you're going to get how simple it is if you just please practice and practice and practice. Do this three times. The same, do the same exact three times. I will do more exercises for you for sure for this week. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's do 26 to 30. It's only to 30, wait a second. It's only to 30, guys. Forget about 31. It's only to 30. Five minutes, okay.
Okay, one more minute. Okay, guys, so let's do depreciation. So we depreciate a building is 26. We depreciate a building of $4,000, okay? So my buildings, so we have an account that is called accumulated depreciation, and we simply register all what is depreciation. So I think it's this one. So we do, depreciation simply reduces the value of, of my building, and this is an expense. Okay, and this is a non-cash tra non -cash transaction, do you agree? Because $4,000 here doesn't have a, a $4,000 in, in the cash ac um, account. It has a $4,000 reducing, that's gonna reduce the value of the building. This is called uh, accumulated depreciation. Then we also de depreciate equipment. Okay, so normally equipment we depreciate is by 6,600. And this is also another expense. And normally, guys, what happens is you, you have a stars here and you say, you know, this is depreciation of building, depreciation of. And these are the notes. Depreciation of equipment. Just to equipment. Just to keep track of what you are depreciating. Then I receive money in transaction 28. I receive money, I receive $10,000. However, guys, what happens is that I, I receive this money, but I haven't paid, I haven't done anything. Okay, so this is going to be a liability that is called unearned revenues. So this is not yet a revenue because I haven't provided a service. So that's why I haven't earned, so that's why it's called an unearned revenue in my current liabilities. Make sense to everyone? This is something that always happens, always. It always happens in corporations. Then the next transaction is I do something. From this $10,000, now I've done a, a service and this service is valued by $4,000. So basically this implies that I, I need to reduce this one here in $4,000. And this is a revenue, correct? Guys, make sense? Yeah. And then the last one here, guys, says that I pay my bond interest. So this is cash. I need to pay, oh, I'm 29, oh, 30. So I pay the $900 and this eliminates my short-term interests. And that's all. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So guys, if you see the last column, sorry, the last row, so let's let's do perhaps I'll say that. What is this money here? So this thirty-eight thousand dollars implies that you have cash, you have thirty-eight thousand dollars. You have an inventory is 12,200, et cetera. So here, for example, I said, yeah, this should be zero. I have a $6,000 in unearned revenues. I have a debt, long-term debt of $30,000, et cetera. I have an accumulated depreciation of 10,600, et cetera. Now guys, if you compare these two numbers, so these are my revenues, these are my expenses. So I have lost in the period $11,000. If you take these two, I have lost eleven thousand dollars five hundred eighty-two. So that's why these two corresponds to my uh, PNL. 
this one here corresponds to, to my cash flow. We're going to work on them right now. Make sense to everyone? Sorry, the P and L is just the... The last two columns. Last two, two columns, columns, right, okay. Yes. So you know that you're losing money. <laughs> Basically, you, if you just keep track of this big uh, document, you know that you're losing $11,000 up to this point. Yeah. Okay, you know that in bank, in cash, you have $30,000, and we're going to work on this stuff. Make sense to you? So remember, guys, what is crucial is that you need to have zeros here. Uh, yeah, Professor, I don't have zeros there. I think I just I must have like copied something in Rush. Where? Correctly. Um, here in the column, control column. Yes, I don't tell have me which row. Um, uh, hold which, on. Um, which row? Which row? So I don't have zeros. That's um, uh, row 20. Okay, so let's do row 20 here. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so row, row 20 is transaction 15. It's basically I sell a product, $5,000 mm -hmm. cash. So this increases my revenues in 5000 Yeah, I think I'm missing just that revenues part. Yep. Okay. What uh, else? What else do I have? Um, row 23. Row 23, this one here. Yes, this one here. So this is the bond side of the equation, right? Yes, I've done mm -hmm. this in two pieces. So I received $30,000 cash from the bond. Mm -hmm. I consider $900 for short term interest, $30,000 for my bond payable, and $900 is for my, as, as my expense. Um, yeah, I yeah i think i just like included the expense with a positive sign yeah and that's just confused it remember expenses are always negative okay yeah and then for uh, row 30 you told us to just change uh, this random number into zero right yeah yeah yeah. It yeah. Is, okay. this one is, is nothing okay great thank you that's all perfect okay guys I, I, for yes. row 10 yes of course really so guys let's let's invest some time here you know because i want you to be to have everything correct here so you can review so let's do rotten <clears throat> rotten is transaction seven uh, so you receive 2300 uh and accounts receivable two thousand dollars from this 2300 300 are are uh, taxes and so only two thousand dollars sorry only four thousand dollars are going to be considered revenues Make sense? And the cost is 3,500 and 3,500 reduces my inventories. Can you take a look? Make sense to you guys? Yes. Guys? Yes. It's clear? Okay, what other one? I, I need to be sure that you, you get the zero, 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 because from here we're going to build our financial statement. So if, if there is a mistake here, you're not going to be able to replicate the, the values here. Where else, guys? Everyone is zero, zero? Can yeah. we do a quick yes. look? Yeah, can we do a quick look, guys? 38, 817, 12, 200, 1000, zero, zero. 33,000, 50,000, 100,000, minus 10,600, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.00, 0, 0. yeah, this is 0. 0, 0, no, 0, 6,000, 30,000, 0, 0, 19, uh, 197, 500, 2,500, 28,642, minus 4224. You get it? Yeah, I got the same. Perfect. Someone else? Um, I don't have the same. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, Where? So the very last number, 23,000 or 235,000 something, is I got that. So that's correct. But I, yeah, in that totals of expenses and revenues, it's just not the same for me. I, I don't know why. Um, Can you verify that? Can you verify these numbers, please? So focus on these numbers here. Because if you have zero, zero, zero everywhere, so you should have the... 
Sorry, um, I think I'm just like sometimes having trouble copying because uh, you know going back and forth between Zoom and Excel just like confuses me. Yeah, it's a, pain, yeah. it's a little confusing for me too. I have. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just like I understand. It's just like I copy things at wrong places clearly. Um, Do you think you could send us the that like the the that Excel? Yeah, I think I think it's better. So give me one second. Yeah, you need to have that correct. Otherwise, guys, it's gonna be save it as a different name so you can see where 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 your mistake was. Okay. Yes. Give me one second. Marian, we could um, you could split screen here. Uh, yeah, that's the normally laptop. what you do. So it's a little easier. Yeah, uh, I try to minimize the windows, but somehow I just get nauseous looking at <laughs> like you know so quickly between the screens. Like literally, I just like how do you split? Oh, the well, oh, I will show you in a minute. Uh, what is this one here? Yeah, this class made me want to buy an external lap, uh, no, external yeah. monitor. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. So basically, guys, if you want to have these two things at the same time, so uh, uh, I don't know if you can see this in, in my screen. Okay, so let me. Let me and see. What do you see? You see Excel, right? Now? Yes. Okay, so what you can do is you can simply minimize this one here. So just put it like, like that, for example. Okay, and, and of course my Zoom is, is, is in a different place, but you don't see my Zoom, but your Zoom should go into this place here, into, into your left side. I think the shortcut is um, pressing the Windows button and then the left arrow. Like Windows button and then the left arrow would automatically make the window to the left side and it's going to ask you to pick another window. Where, where, where? Sorry, you, you said where? So, so there's like a shortcut in Windows 10. Yeah. So if you click um, the Windows button with in the here, left yeah. arrow, it's yeah, going right. to automatically ask. Guys, it's so automatically have... make the window to the left side. This so one? that will divide it equally, so it's easier for you to manage. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, so this is cool to to know. So I, do you see my screen, right, guys? Yes. Yeah. Do you see my Windows part? Sorry, Perhaps Windows it, what? We only see the Excel. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's Zoom. Ah. Uh, so you're saying basically go to the left, left, left side. There is a Windows, Windows. No, no. So the Windows button and the keyboard. I mean. Oh. Uh, so you click the Windows button and the keyboard, hold it, and then you press the left arrow button. Okay. So yeah. Do you understand, so guys? So it will divide the window. So if, for example, so my side is like the left side is Zoom, and then the right side is the Excel file. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's that's exactly what we need. So uh, it's easier to follow. Guys, do you understand what um, Daniel is saying? There is yeah, a- Yeah, thanks Dan, I'll play around oh. with it at home to make sure it works, yeah. yeah. Perfect, yeah, because we need to have two screens, really. Yeah, Otherwise it's, it's gonna be yeah. insane to go back and forth. Oh, I, I sent you the, wait a second, I sent you the document or not? Yeah, you, you sent it. Can we use it now? Yes, use moment? it, use so it, that, use yeah, it. Yeah, so that we don't yes. spend time on- like, Yes, use it, please. Everything. Yeah, great, thank you. Okay. Please keep the, the one that you have been working on so you can see where is the mistake and then you try to replicate what you have here. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Okay, so we are all in the same page then. So today let's do at least the PNL that is an easy one here, guys. So what I will do now is I need to have here, what I will do here is I will divide my windows in the following way. Oh. Where's my... Is this bothering me now? Sorry, Professor, what are you trying to do? I'm trying to come back to my Windows, <laughs> to my Excel, so I don't want the pen. Give me one second, guys. I don't know what is it doing now. 
Oh yeah. So what I will do is I will split in here. Okay, so I just need to have this part here. So, and you know what I've done guys, split the, your screen. I want to keep the dates and the, the names up. You just put the, the, the cursor in a, cursor in a C3 and then you go view. And also, yes, you go view and then split. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah, I got it. Okay, once you have that, what you do is you simply go to, to the end because we're going to do the PNL. The PNL only looks, works for the last two, the revenues and expenses. sense so remember that 22 if you can do also this 22 is the commercial paper to remember so this is also an extraordinary revenue these are the two things that you need to remember the first one is because you sold a machinery that is you from your own equipment and this one here is extraordinary revenue because uh, this is not your business to be doing uh, investments in, in commercial papers okay so now, can we go, no, this is not a good idea, so I will move this a little here. Yeah, because I want to have this. We're going to be working with the p &L guys. Okay, so my net sales or my, my, what is called my revenue, if you can rewrite this better as revenue guys. Okay, the first one, call it revenue. Okay, so my revenue, you just type equals and go to the, let's go to the, to the field. My revenue, guys, is going to be this one here. So all the revenues except, except uh, 18 and 24. So it's this one plus this one plus this one plus this one plus. So some everything except transactions 18 and 22 in the revenue side. Okay, so everything except uh, transactions 18 and 22. Enter. So you should have 23,497. You have that? Guys, do you have this one here? 23,497, you, you must have it because we have the same page. Everyone has the same page, so. 18 and 24, correct? Th those are the ones that you don't consider because those ones are external income. So transaction 18 and trans transaction 24, you don't consider these two numbers. You consider all the other revenues except these two numbers. 5,000. Uh, what number are we supposed to get? 23,000 something, great. Right? Uh, yeah, 23,497, I think. Okay. Okay? Yes, that's, that's right. Good. So now we go into cost of goods. Okay, the cost of goods, guys, are basically what transactions. So let me see. So cost of goods are going to be, cost is, we're going to be talking about the, the expenses. So we go, a transaction four, so this 2,800, because it's cost of goods, remember? A, then we go plus transaction seven, this 3,500. Then we do transaction 15, that is also another sale of, of, of um, inventory. So these are the ones that are related directly to sale of inventory. Okay, so if we get, so we have a negative 9,800. So these are transactions four, seven, and 15, the, the expenses, okay? 
4, 7, and 15. Sorry, what is 4? What? 4 is the... Transaction, guys. This, this, this one here. It's not... Yeah, it's, there is no expense for 4, right? No, no, or... no. Remember, 4 is two, 2 lines. The expense is down. Oh, okay. The, the uh... number 7... Yeah, number oh, seven is I two lines. You meant the, I thought you meant the row. Like, no, 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 no. I'm side. talking about transactions, guys. Transactions. Ah, shit. Okay. Got it? Transactions. Transactions four, transaction seven, and transaction 15, I think. Yes, 15. Okay. So these ones here, I'm not, at the, uh, I'm not just guessing, guys. These are the ones that correspond to cost of goods. So we sold inventory. It's 6,000 to... Do so is this one here plus this one here plus this one here so in total you should go 9800 negative mm. yeah okay um, sorry you got it Guys, you got it or not? Yeah. Um, sorry, just uh, a second. Not true. Yeah. It's uh, nine thousand eight hundred or yes, um, nine thousand yeah, eight hundred okay. negative, right? Mm -hmm. Good. So okay, so we have the second one, the the thirteen thousand. So we we should have gross margin thirteen thousand six hundred ninety seven positive, correct? Yep. Yes. So sales and marketing guys yes. are the expenses 12 and 21. Do you remember this publicity? So we go 12, transactions 12, plus transaction 21. That is the other, the, these are the marketing expenses, publicity. So you should add up to 2000, negative. Do you agree, guys? Yeah. Well, we don't have anything in research and development. Then we have general and administration. These are the salaries, guys. The salaries are transactions nine and 16. So you do equal. Salaries are transactions nine and 16. So transaction nine plus transaction 16. So $7,000 negative, correct? Nine and sixteen. Yes, these are the, the salaries, wages. Sorry, this is uh, this is what. Sorry, which one again? Is this general general administration? General general administration. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so we um, got. Yes. Which one is general and administration? The salaries, and salaries are please. Uh, salaries are uh, transactions nine. Uh, transactions. So salaries and nine and sixteen. These two. That was uh, R and D for some reason, but okay. No, 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 no. We don't have anything in R and D. Yeah, we don't have any. We don't have R and D in this example. We don't have R and D. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Finally, no, not finally. Then we go okay. into. Then we. It go... was nine and sixteen, right? Um, okay. Which one? Uh, for salaries. Um... No, it's only seven thousand dollars. No, I mean the. Oh, yes, 9 and 16, yes, uh, yeah. transactions, 9 and 16. Yeah, hold on. Okay, depreciation, guys, are transactions 26 and 27. So if you go depreciation, it's 26. 26 you, and 27. 27, exactly, exactly. Okay. Um, so it's 4,000 and 6,600. So this gives you a negative of 10,600. Yes. Yeah. Okay, then we go to interest and income expenses, guys. These are transactions 11, 17, and 20. So these are 11, 17, and 20. Mm -hmm. This is interest income. Uh, yes, and expenses. And expenses, yes. It's 11. 17 and 20. Okay. Yes, 11 is this one here, 32. 17 uh, is this 900, this is the, the bond interest. And 20, what is 20? 
2020. 20 is my, my interest for a short-term loan from the bank. So you should have 1,324.9. Mm -hmm. Yep, makes sense? Yeah. Sorry, it's 13, 17, and 27? Uh, no, 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 no. It's 11, 17, and 20. And 28. Yes, 11. So this one here is 11. What is 11? Is this one here plus 17 plus 20? This one here. Okay. okay. So it should be negative 3,000. Uh, let me see. 24? No, negative 1,324. Oh, Minus negative 1,000. It's 1,000 only. Minus 1,324. Do you have that, guys? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Ah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Perfect. Wrong one. Yeah. And the last one, guys, extraordinary income expenses, these are going to be 18, 22, and 24. And 24. Yes, so it's going to be 18, 18, my expense, plus 22. What is my 22 here? Twenty-four. What is which one is twenty-four? Give me one second. Uh, what is this one here? Wait a second. No, I don't think this is correct. So I I told you eighteen. Um. Sorry, what was the sales and marketing uh, once again? It was 12, 21, and... Uh... Uh, so no, no, just 12 and 21, I think. Uh, only two, 2,000, 2,000. Uh, yeah, for some reason I got uh, minus 4,500. Let me check if I'm... Yeah, no, 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 wait, wait. What do you get? Minus what? In what? In marketing? 4,500, yeah, uh, for sales and marketing. No, no, no. Sales and marketing are only 12 and 21. So it's 12. Yeah, I... Uh, I Probably put in the wrong number. So it's 12 and 20. Yeah. So let me see the last one here, guys. Uh, cannot be 18. Let me see the last one. Okay. So this should be. One second, it should be. I need to read. Eighteen and twenty-two. No. Yes. No. 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 Nope. So it should be. Let me see. It should be twenty-five. Uh, let me see. Yeah, should be this one here. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, of course. You know, the problem with everything that is extraordinary, guys, it is all, all only collected in a single line. So it's called extraordinary income and expenses, okay? So basically, follow me, guys. This is going to be equal to the following. We have only two extraordinary expenses, okay? There are 18 and 22. Do you see that? These are my extraordinary ex air revenue or expenses. So it's going to be this plus the expense for 18 plus, uh, then we have, what is my other extraordinary expense? 22. 22, is this only 22? 22, is this one here? Yeah. Give me one second. Mm, twenty-six thirty-two. Give me one second. Twenty-six thirty-two. Oh, okay, half.
Oh, yeah, 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 of course. We have this guy, the 2,500. What is the 2,500 there? Let me see. The 2,500 is... Which transaction is this one? Twenty-four. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay, so let's do this again. So this is going to be equal to my this one here. So why? Sorry, transaction eighteen plus this one here. So the five thousand and minus seven thousand. Then we add the hundred forty-five. And then we add the 2,500 negative. Okay, so I will, I will. Sorry, this is for? For extraordinary income and expenses. So I, oh. I will make this big. And then I put an F2. Yes, you to, to allow you to see. So it's going to be the, um, the sales of uh, revenue for selling equipment, the cost of selling the equipment then the revenue for the short-term investment, so the, the commercial paper, and uh, the cost for, what is it, 2,500, we said 24, for reacquiring capital. So this is, this is my, my last one. This 4,300. Um, oh, this yes. is a buyback. Yes, okay, exactly, the buyback. And then we have the 11,500 guys, that is exactly the amount of money that we get here. Do you remember the loss? Mm -hmm. Now we have it in a in a PNL format. Okay, guys, we need to stop here because I have my my next class. I need to save a lot of things here. We're going to redo this again next class. Please, if you can review this part here, okay, you have you, you have basically the correct thing and practice, guys. Okay, practice, please practice because that's the only the only way you're going to learn this stuff that is extremely crucial for you. Okay, guys. Okay, thank you. Okay, talk Thanks, soon professor. then. Take care, guys. Thank have you. Have, have a good, good night. night. See you. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye.